All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. That was okay. We're going to try it again. Good afternoon. Much better. How are you? For any of, for any of you I've yet to meet, I'm Rick Kidder, uh, President and CEO of One South Coast Chamber. We are thrilled to be here today because this place is a victory. As a society, we've had very few victories in the last few months. But look around you. This is something new. It's something wonderful, and it constitutes our ability to go out once again. So that's a testimony to all of you and all of the hard work that you have done to keep us safe, and a testimony to our mayor, who has done a phenomenal job of keeping a cool head about him. We also want to honor the fact that Steve Silverstein has done an amazing job of investing in our community. And that investment is something that is unsurpassed in this business. Take a look at the Black Whale right over here, this wonderful facility. I happen to live down on Clark's Point. I can't wait for Cisco to open because that is going to be one special place. So let's give our host a hand. As always, we are very pleased to have a lot of our ambassadors here today, and I want our ambassadors to give a wave and a woohoo. Woo All right, thank you so much. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the mayor of the city of New Bedford, John Mitchell. All right. All right, thank you, Rick. And I'm going to unmask myself uh, for this. Uh, Everyone remain distant from me for the moment. Um, uh, you know, um, I, I, we've been looking forward to this day for a while for, for lots of reasons. And we've, we've been talking about the possibility of, you know, doing something uh, here on Pier 3 for, for some time now. Uh, in fact, the, the Chapter 91 license uh, application is about six years old at this point. It's, uh, right, Steve? But, um, but it's, it came to fruition because... Um, uh, of uh, the boldness of this gentleman right, uh, right behind me to, to the left. And, I, and I, um, I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, the chamber under Rick's leadership has come out in, in earnest for the, to support a small business like this. Um, and for your leadership, uh, I, I'm grateful, Rick. And um, it, it's uh, just to pick up on, on Rick's um, point about, you know, this being the right, uh, at the right moment at the right time, um, and I hope this isn't too obscure of a historical reference, but it, it is apt. I mean, some, um, it reminds me of the Doolittle Raids, right, in 1942. Pearl Harbor hits, um, America is flat on its back, doesn't know, uh, it is struggling to figure out next steps. And a guy, a Army Air Corps colonel named Jimmy Doolittle, says we're going to get the Japanese. I don't care if the conventional wisdom is that we can't get back up on our feet. It doesn't matter. Our planes are ill-equipped. We can't reach. We we can't really can't reach them effectively. Um, but we're going to do it. And so they bomb Tokyo just a few months after um, after Pearl Harbor, and it was a big deal. It was a huge boost to the American um, uh, psyche at the time. It gave, it gave everybody a lot of confidence that, you know what, we can do this. We can get through it. We can make, we can make a difference. And, it was, and so this is, you know, in some small way, in the midst of a 100-year a plague, uh, that, kind of, um, that, that kind of step. The, the, it, it, take, it takes some, some backbone. It takes some audacity to open up a business uh, when we have seen just in a matter of two months our unemployment rate go from 5% to 24%, right? Like the conventional wisdom would be kick back, protect yourself, hunker down. And that's not what Steve has done here. Uh, he is, in fact, you know, as we talked about leasing out uh, this facility, um, you know, he said, uh, like, what are you waiting for? 
and which is exactly it. I usually don't get that, you know. Um, and but and I'm so it's it's so uh, such a welcome approach to investment. You know, Steve's a New Bedford guy, uh, and he believes in this place um, as we all do, and is willing to put you know his hard-earned money uh, behind uh, his risk-taking. You know, he's done fabulously well at. Uh, at the Black Whale just in the last couple of years. And of course, you know, he founded uh, the Not Your Average Joe uh, chain of restaurants, which has been, you know, hugely successful. I mean, he really, when it comes to being a restaurateur, he really knows what he's doing and having his expertise and his willingness to take on risk um, is, is so enormously helpful for us uh, here. Uh, and so, I just want to thank you, Steve, and your family, and Judy, and, and your kids. I know Will's taking over. He's uh, he's taking a big step up from a you know a five star or, or a Michelin rated uh, New York restaurant, and he's and now he's back here in New Bedford uh, doing this. So we appreciate what you bring to the table too, um, all of you guys. Um, it's uh, it's this is gonna you guys are gonna kill it here. You're already killing it. You're already ruining diets, which is great. <laughs> Um, that's that's uh, that's that's what we, we want, and um, and there's more to more to come. The Warfinger Building, you know, the city's former auction, uh, fishing auction house will uh, will be activated as well over time. Rick mentioned uh, Cisco New Bedford, which is an ambitious project, which will be a, a, a tremendous gathering point uh, for the city on the peninsula. is 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 uh, is in the queue for next year. So it's good stuff. People should look at this and say, great food. Um, for sure, right next to the ferry terminal, for sure. Great place to, to check out. Pier 3 is the heart of the Bedford's fishing industry, and so happens now. There's also a lot of great food here, too. They are compatible. They are very compatible. You're never going to hear a, a fisherman in New Bedford say, you know, we shouldn't have a great restaurant right next to where I park my, uh, my, my, uh, my scalloper. That's not going to, that's, that's not uh, even in the cards. Uh, this all works together. It's taken a lot of planning and a lot of people uh, to bring this all together. I do want to th uh, emphasize my thanks to, uh, th to the Chamber uh, for your support again, Rick. I want to thank the City Council for your support uh, along the way. City Council President Joe Lopes, we're in Ward 4. Uh, Derek Baptiste is here in support. Uh, and Ian Abreu, who's uh, in the, uh, involved in so many um, um, initiatives when it comes to uh, small businesses is here as well, uh, including on behalf of the chamber. Scott Lima from Ward 5 uh, is also a huge supporter of small businesses in the city. He's uh, here as well. I want to thank all of you guys for, for your support. It's, it's really, uh, uh, we've, we've had conversations about this place over time and your support has been, uh, been huge. Um, and I do want to thank the leadership of Joe Lopes, the city council president on that front, especially. Um, and I want, and I want to thank, uh, I want to thank Tony Sapienza, uh, Tony wears many hats. Uh, we were just at a press conference over at the Whaling Museum, so Tony there was the chair of the Whaling Museum. At this press conference, he's the chair of the Economic Development Council. Uh, we'll do other events where he's uh, wearing his other chairman hats, but he's uh, uh, the, the designated chairman, but uh, tr a tremendous private sector leader in the city uh, with whom we could not do without. So thank you, Tony, for your support and that uh, of the EDC. Uh, I want to thank the, um, all the city employees that had a big part uh, in setting this uh, up and building in the utilities and uh, folks at DPI who you know, worked really hard to make it just so. Lots of them, too many to, to name. The New Bedford Port Authority under Ed Washburn's leadership did a great job in, in moving this along as well as with Blair Bailey uh, from the city solicitor's office and working on uh, the lease. There's been a lot of work. I've named everybody because everybody has pitched in. It's been a tremendous uh, team effort. And, it's going to be. It's a great concept. Um, I um, I'm, I would be remiss if I didn't um, acknowledge the presence of the First Lady of New Bedford, Ann Partridge herself, uh, wearing the Lily Pulitzer dress over there, uh, <laughs> and sporting uh, the the standard New Bedford mask. Uh, I'm just so thrilled. By the way, I'll just say this is on a personal note. Just so thrilled that Annie could be here today. Uh, we've, the pandemic does have some silver linings, and one of which is that we've been able to spend more time together in the last three months than we had in the previous 20 years. So, uh, so that's a good thing, at least for me. I don't, don't, don't ask her that question. Um, and then last, you know, I just, again, I, I just want to say 
thanks to Steve and the Silverstein family. You guys are, um, your mother's not here today. Is she here? She's probably, you have, she's cleaning again. I hope not. Yeah, I hope not because she's done a lot of work I've, I've observed. Uh, but I just want to just really thank you for your belief in New Bedford, Steve, and your entrepreneurialism. Um, some of us, you and I talked about this. Some of us remember McRae's fried clams in Westport on Route 6. They used to generate these enormous lines in the summertime, and it kind of looked just like this. This is better. I've, I've heard early reports that the fried clams are better, which is hard to believe because we all remember McCrae's as being fantastic. But the other thing is it's smack dab in the, in the, in the center of the fishing industry and, the, and, and uh, the, the biggest fishing port in America, so right, right where it should be. So thank you all. Uh, thank you, Steve. And so on this occasion, I do want to mark it with a, an official mayoral resolution because it's not an official business unless you get one of these, Steve, of course. Uh, but it says here that the city of New Bedford hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to the Whale's Tail Clam Bar and Steve Silverstein in celebration of the grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony for your new establishment and in appreciation of your continued investment in the revitalization of New Bedford with best wishes for your continued success and prosperity. Um, Signed this day by me on J July 9th as uh, mayor, and um, good luck with those diets, everybody. This place is going <laughs> to ruin them. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I, I'm embarrassed to tell you, First Lady Mitchell, that in the 1970s, as a college student, I worked in Edgartown, and I went to Lily Pulitzer, and I got that exact same pattern <laughs> on a pair of pants. You will all be pleased to know they no longer fit. <laughs> it's my pleasure now to introduce members of the City Council who are here. Uh, I see Scott Lima over there, uh, City Council President Joe Lopes, uh, City Councilman at Large Ian Abreu, uh, and Ward 4 Councilor Derek Baptiste, and they have a proclamation to deliver. I'm also going to take the mask off briefly. Does the gentleman want to come up? Yeah. This is in Derek Baptiste, this is the heart of his ward, and Councilor Abreu is a councilor at large. But to Stephen and his family, I'm going to say one thing, you build destination restaurants. Doesn't matter if it was the original Not Your Average Joe's, inheriting the black whale, and now this. You truly put your stamp on the industry and on the community in which you're part of. If you go by Not Your Average Joe's right now, you're one of the first to do outdoor dinings and you made your parking lot beautiful. And everyone followed. You've innovated in the restaurant industry and you continue to innovate today. We thank you for your dedication to the community. You haven't forgot your roots, your family being Silversteins, where most people will know Silversteins, but you continue the legacy that your great grandfather started and you've only enhanced it. The next generation is doing it as well. So we thank you for your continued support of the city and its community. Um, since this is Derek Baptiste Ward, I'm going to let him read the proclamation, which he doesn't know that. So <laughs> it's all about the surprise sometimes. I don't, I don't like to be surprised. Um, That's why whenever you get to do it, you get to take advantage of it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, the official resolution, be it hereby known to all that, the City Council of New Bedford, Massachusetts, hereby offers the sincerest congratulations to the Whale's Tail Clam Bar and recognition, the celebration of your grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony. The entire, the entire, citizen, the entire citizenry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm over here nervous because you got me talking out of the blue. I was like, I was just going to say congratulations today, good luck, and all, you know, all the things. Uh, well, you just did. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I heard Silverstein's today. I, I, all I can think about was my grandmother saying, you need some 12 slims. You need 12 slims. Um, the entire citizenry uh, extends its very uh, best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued good fortune, given this ninth day of June 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is your, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now uh, a few words from our host. Uh, well, thank you. I, I have a, a lot of thoughts running through my head. Um, and the, f the first and foremost is that I believe I've created this incredible partnership with the mayor and uh, without the mayor and without his vision and his boldness and his courage and uh, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here and it's kind of funny and it's 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 both humbling and embarrassing to me in that 
people thank me all the time for investing in New Bedford, and and I don't really deserve the things, and I don't feel that that's. I'm a, I'm a business guy doing what I believe the market needs, but it's such a wonderful thing to, for, for the community to rally so much around what we're doing. For about 25 years, uh, I traveled up and down the East Coast opening Not Your Average Joe's. We had almost 30 Not Your Average Joe's in, uh, in six states. And uh, when I came back here about two years ago, uh, I recognized uh, while I had done something important, uh, that I really wasn't happy doing what I was doing. I was traveling, I was away from home, I had a lot of employees, 2,000 employees, I was always cranky, I was always unhappy, the restaurants were never clean. And coming back to New Bedford, in, a, in the area, the geography that I love so much, uh, in the, in, in the, uh, the warmness of the people of New Bedford has been the greatest thing uh, that I have done and I said to my son Will over here um, You know, I feel like I wasted, you know, 20 something years on the not yet was Joe's project He said yeah, but yeah, if you didn't do that you wouldn't be doing this and I said that's a good point uh, So so coming back home is incredible. I think many of you know the story uh, my great-grandfather started uh, a little dry goods business on a push cart in the south end of New Bedford on Water Street and they tell me the story of how Water Street was the high street of New Bedford. And my father likes to tell the story that he told his father is someday we'd love if we could move downtown like salt marshes. And last night I went to the Datmer event and we saw the salt marshes and we, my wife and I walked around and kind of reminisced about what was and we thought about what could be. And uh, this is a temporary setback. We're gonna come back in New Bedford uh, with the mayor and with Tony and with all the councilors, uh, we're going to do great stuff here um, and uh, bring us back uh, to the heyday of the wheeling days. Uh, but anyway, so w we've been in business continuously, the Silversteins, since 1800. And that makes me really proud. And I couldn't be prouder to have my children, uh, my wife. I don't know if you know any Yiddish, uh, but if you don't, you may know this one word. I'm going to use this one word. My wife is such a hard worker. Uh, she's schlepping something right now. She was down here early this morning to put these little signs up that we made the order here. And, and you're right. I actually haven't created anything original, but I'm really good at copying other stuff. And remember, uh, Mayor, I told you there was a place in Long Island called Amagansett Clam Shack or McCray's. We copied the food, but this place looks like Amagansett Clam Shack. And uh, we're really proud of it. But uh, it's just it's just great. It's great to be here. Uh, my longtime business partner Jamie Strabino is here. Uh, that was my daughter with the pink dress. I'm not sure where she went. We have another daughter um, who's at home, uh, and I just couldn't I couldn't I couldn't be happier. Uh, and we expect to start working on Cisco again uh, shortly. Our plan is to get that open uh, next April. Uh, God forbid things don't improve. We're still going to do it. Uh, as long as they don't deteriorate, but we expect uh, great improvements. The mayor told me, don't worry, uh, but um, not really. I'm making that up. Um, by the way, I am a big warrior, uh, and I think that's one of the things that drives success is, is nerves and, and worry. But anyway, uh, I'm honored. I'm humbled. I'm a bit embarrassed uh, to have such a great turnout here, and uh, I'm here uh, to do anything I can to help this, uh, this great city of New Bedford that I call home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, now the only thing keeping you from sampling this incredible food is a ribbon cutting. So let's get this ribbon cutting going. Okay, we'll do it on three. One, two, three. Yeah, congratulations. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Nice job, Rick. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you well, <laughs> <laughs>